history is made. The Virginia Cavaliers are national champs. And tonight, your hometown station covers it all. From Minneapolis to Charlottesville. With team coverage everywhere. This special edition of WDBJ7 starts right now. An exciting night. Thank you for staying up late with us. I'm Melissa Gangona. And I'm Jean Jadhan. You saw it right here on WDBJ7. The Virginia Cavaliers overcame a tough Texas Tech Red Raiders team and a tie to win in overtime with the final score 85-77. The celebration for these NCAA champions started on the court but it is far from over tonight. And we have eight anchors and reporters spread out in Charlottesville and Minneapolis, bringing you team coverage of this historic night. Let's go ahead and get started with sports director Travis Wells, who is live at U.S. Bank Stadium. Travis, what a night for the Hoots. It was the Wahoo fans, happy Wahoo fans starting to pour out of U.S. Bank Stadium following the celebration for their team. Virginia was trying to become the first team to go from losing to a 16 seed in the first round of the NCAA tournament to winning a national title in the next year. Tonight's game featured Virginia and Texas Tech, two championship game newcomers. The last time that happened, 1979, when Magic Johnson of Michigan State met Larry Bird in Indiana State. Let's go inside. 72,000 plus fans got their money's worth. Kyle Guy getting the who started, knocking down a tough jumper as UVA opened up an early 10 point lead. But Texas Tech hanging in thanks to some stellar three point shooting, taking the lead with an 18 to 4 run. But just before the half, Ty Jerome going to step back and bury a three ball of his own from the top of the key. The Cavaliers were up by three at the half in the second half. DeAndre Hunter found his groove in a big way. This is going to go down. The Red Raiders, though kept hanging in. They battled back to lead by three late, but Hunter money down the stretch. He hits the corner three. This thing's headed to overtime in the extra frame. Hunter stepped up and drilled another big three. He finished the night with 27 points. Guy finished with 24. Jerome had 16. And guess what? Virginia is king, winning the national title. The first one in school history, 85 to 77, your final. Now, while Hunter, Guy, and Jerome were absolutely sensational tonight, Tony Bennett and his team got some unsung contributions from some heroes, unlikely heroes. Mamadi Diakite's defense was sensational. He had several key blocks late, and Braxton Key played big minutes off the bench. Now, Anthony Romano is inside. He's in the victorious locker room. We hope to have some happy who's for you in their comments on the national championship. Virginia's first ever, guys. We'll send it back to you and Rona. I know. I, I, I would say with certainty we're going to have some happy <laughs> who's coming up from the locker no room. All right, Travis Wells, thank you from Minneapolis. We'll be back with you guys out there. Yeah, and uh, as you guys know, if you watched our Facebook feed, John Paul Jones Arena was yeah. packed tonight as fans watched this championship game unfold. And WDVJ 7's Logan Sherrill and Victoria Wood are going to continue our team coverage tonight. Guys, I watched some of the live feed and the atmosphere was electric. I know. Uh, to say the least, Mel, and you know, I, I know a lot of times people will give me grief for saying this, but I, it has to be said because it is part of this team's story. Let's hear it. From what this team went through last year, and to witness that, yeah. unfortunately, and then yeah. to be here tonight to witness 6,000 yeah. people in that place losing their minds, you included, it was unbelievable. I couldn't help. I mean, I, I was excited. You're, you couldn't help but just dive in, dive into the oh. energy. It was just like a pool, and you just wanted to dive off the deep end. And never get out. And never get out. Honestly, people might say that it takes away from their story to talk about that loss last year in the first round. I say it adds to it. It I does. I say this made this moment even more dramatic and incredible. And the team never shied away from talking about it. Tony Bennett never shied away no. from using that to fuel the avenue for their success. And year. any fans that we spoke with out here tonight, there was something that they that they brought up as well. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know it I don't think we'll ever see something like no. this again going going from that to this and Incredible. the first national championship for so many of these fans, uh -huh. some of the fans that are hanging around with us right now as a matter of fact. It's true. I mean, I've been cheering for UVA for a long time. My family mm -hmm. has, and I actually ran into a couple of a couple of guys from Lexington. Guys Come from on Lexington. over, boys. Let's talk to Shane. <laughs> Just hang right out here. here and Travis. 
So I saw Shane dancing out of John Paul Jones Arena because he was that excited. Travis following suit here. But we got to ask, how does it feel cheering for the Hoos? All this time, you said 28 years, and today, how does it feel? Ah, uh, sad that it's just, it's unreal. Yeah. Sad that it, it just don't happen. We, at the very end, we don't make the shots. Sad that it's the ones that do, sad that they hit the shot on us every year. Mm -hmm. Sad that it's always them making it, and it's our time. Yeah. And I'll tell you this much. I, as, as of just a basketball fan, period, it doesn't matter if you're a fan of Virginia, a fan of whoever, you have to appreciate what we just watched tonight. Yes. I mean, how, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> I meant a few words. words. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, get I don't blame it. you. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a jubilation that you just really can't describe until mm -hmm. you feel it. I, I, and I'll ask you this, and it, may be, it might be a one-word answer, too. Have you ever had this feeling right now? So I've done basketball player myself and how Guy and Hunter and so I've done hit them free throw shots and just finish the game is fun No, yeah. we have to ask you about the atmosphere inside there. All the people going crazy. Did you feel like you were in Minneapolis? Did you feel like you were in the middle of all of it? People, it really did make you feel like it was just that kind of moment. Yeah, it's not that it was unexplainable, but I mean, <laughs> when we've been here. Lucky enough to be here one time when they beat Duke, so I that, and they wouldn't even hear it tonight. We was watching on TV, but it was something. Sounds to me like you boys are the good luck charms. I think that's what it is. This is the second time you've been here. First time it was beating Duke. Now you just uh, became national We've champions. Been, been here a lot. Besides that, just the win in Duke. I mean, that was yeah. a yeah. big one. Besides that. One more question for you. I gotta ask: Is it worth coming up here from Lexington? And why did you guys decide to to make the drive? He texted me one night and asked if I wanted to come up here and watch it. And I told him, yeah, uh, I'm glad to be up here tonight. Simple as that. Simple as that. So that late, early, so that we was here. All right, boys, will y'all well, go on, get to the corner, wherever it is, y'all got to go dance and party and just be safe tonight. That's all, that's all, that's all you got to do, right? <laughs> all right, man. Yes, they've been our cheerleaders on the sidelines. Right, right up top, boys. Started. We appreciate it. Uh -huh. Thank you thank all. Thank you all. Thanks, all right, so there you go. I mean, just, just it, sometimes it, it, it's, it's tough to describe, and, you know, you just, it's a feeling that is undescribable. Yeah. You just, it's, it, was, it was really wild how the, the first moment, when when the uh, when the CBS broadcast began at about f I guess 8:30, as soon as they started talking about and showing the team mm -hmm. this just roar, and I felt a goosebump. I'm literally from my toe to the top of my head. It sounds like you could write a song about that. You really could. I'm sure. I'm sure somebody has. <laughs> I, I was driving on the way here, trying to listen to the radio, trying to listen to the live stream. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like coming into an environment like this. I tell you, it was it was very special to be here tonight. From yeah. Charlottesville to Minneapolis, mm -hmm. uh, plenty of you have just you know been taking to social media, of yes. course, tonight, sharing the excitement and uh, sharing posts about personal experience during tonight's historic game. Definitely so, mm -hmm. and our Jane Caffrey has been scouring all of those social media posts. Jane, if they were anything like the game, you came across uh, some pretty entertaining stuff, <laughs> I have a feeling. Dean, Melissa, all kinds of things on social media. People sharing their sheer excitement for the Wahoos and others venting about their stress during that nail-biting close game. All right, so check this out. A great grandma completely decked out with her hat and pom-pom. Her great grandson Noah says that she is the biggest UVA fan he knows. And this one, Meg Bowen, took her anxiety out during the game in a great way, confirmed stress baking is a thing. Love those UVA cookies. All right, Cavaliers fans sure put in the effort to get to the championship for Austin Mitchell, a 17.5 hour drive and less than four hours of sleep but all worth it. And he was joined by some VIP fans at the U.S. Bank Stadium, like UVA alumni and current NFL players. The stars were out. And the party wasn't just in Minneapolis, as you just saw. Thousands of people packed the John Paul Jones Arena. UVA tweeted that you can hear the JPJ from Minnesota. I wouldn't be surprised if you could. And Fanshay says it well here. Wake me up. This can't be real. And that hashtag 
champions. So what an incredible journey yeah. for UVA reflected on social media. One year after that tough loss, some people online mm. are even calling for a movie about this great sports story with a storybook ending. Makes sense. I think it'd make a nice movie. Yeah. Sure and, and I'd like to go to the woman's house who does the stress baking. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> spot have to watch over? the game. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about the lady uh, with the Dr. Dr. Pepper, Pepper can hat. Oh, that was so cute. <laughs> yes. Very exciting. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Jane. An exciting night at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville as fans packed in the stadium to cheer on the Cavaliers. If Minneapolis is the center of this epic showdown, the center of the epic party is at the corner in downtown Charlottesville, particularly at Boylan Heights, where people started partying well before tip off. Yes, and tonight UVA law students had a chance to blow off some steam. WDBJ 7's Leanna Scacchetti has their story. For UVA's law students, the championship game was a case they could all get behind. What if the Who's don't win? I, I don't know what you just said. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Booking the bar for a last minute party, the law school's executive board sold 150 tickets in less than an hour. Prime evidence of the power of the hoops. 22 minutes. Yeah. And law students don't like to wake up early. <laughs> an early day leading to a long night where the party is all around you. Uh, I think law students never really need an excuse to go out and have a really good time to release a little bit of the stress, so this is a great excuse. Matt Simpson is part of the jury, watching the Cavaliers make an appeal for the title. You know, two years here, the first year is a little rough. This year, a lot of redemption, so definitely uh, been enjoying both, uh, both rides, but this year's a lot sweeter, so it's good. And for Simpson, the ride here is one he didn't need to see to believe. Well, I think it's being around the environment, the people, you know, we got all all the community here. Everybody's going crazy. Everybody's having fun. So, you know, that's what it's all about. It doesn't really matter if you can see what's going on. It's about the environment. An athlete himself, Simpson competed in the Rio Paralympics and understands full well the pressure the Who's face on the court. You know, it's the biggest night of their lives and I bet they're just soaking it all in and, uh, you know, ready to come out and win a national championship. Simpson and his law school peers are ready to defend their Who's no matter the outcome. Let's go Who's! I'd say those law students deserve a little break. Uh, yes, and, break uh, from the stress. Down, yes, some downtime. Okay, yeah. so while the corner was buzzing, plenty of UVA fans cheered on the Cavaliers from campus. WDBJ 7's Kendall Davis found students who say win or lose, it has been a great season for the Wahoos. Tonight's game is where the, the circle fully closes. And things have definitely come around full circle for UVA students who were devastated from last year's loss. Glum just sort of spread all around the campus, uh, or grounds rather, and uh, students everywhere were distraught and, and very upset. But for many, like senior Davis McNulty, the loss didn't crush their spirit. In reality, I knew that we'd bounce back. I never lost that faith and I always kept that with me. That was the inspiration behind this shirt Minnaughty created called The Comeback Season to remind him of the life lessons he learned from last season. To always keep positivity, always remain in good faith, or never underestimate any opponent that you that you may face in life in general. And for freshman Sam Brittany Pandy, this run has shown her how the campus can come together. As a whole, everyone can agree that we want our who's to win, so I think it's a great way in bridging, you know, different gaps of understanding that we may have at this institution and just creating a broader community community. As time on campus winds down for McNulty, he's grateful to be a part of this season. Win or lose, we've made history and we've really proved to ourselves that we could get that monkey off our back and we could really make a positive impact and make change. So it's been fantastic. We have been down at the corner for most of the day where people started celebrating early. That celebration, as you can see, has continued well into the night, even after the game has concluded. Thousands of students, Charlottesville residents, all down congregating in a neighborhood called The Corner, where most of the celebrations for the Cavaliers for March Madness have been taking place. We've been speaking with students all day about what a historic win this is for the college, how much pride they are feeling in their school. A lot of people giving a lot of praise to coach Tony Bennett for what he has been able to do for the team and for the students here. Large police presence keeping an eye on all of the activities here. Obviously, this has been a boost for a lot of the businesses in the area. 
one of the bars nearby. We spent most of the day in talking to students, had to close for an hour to prepare for the rest of the night. This is clearly an epic night for Charlottesville, an epic night for the Cavaliers. One that looks like it's going to continue into the early hours of the morning. Again, a big and historic win for the Cavaliers. A lot of prideful students tonight will be very tired tomorrow morning. Reporting from Charlottesville, Leanna Scacchetti, WDBJ7. And yeah. hopefully they go to class. Maybe. She said they're going to be tired. I don't know. They may not show up. They may not go to class. But, you know, the faculty may not want to go to class either because they're true. probably celebrating just the <laughs> same.